Hello and welcome to a very different video, which is where we're going to be looking into the mathematical equations of the Gray Wolf optimizer in details. I'm going to be using the P5 platform again. Uh, I've already written uh, more than 100 lines of code. You can find this file and the whole package underneath this video um, in, in the playlist. Make sure to download it do a lot of experiments, change whatever you want, it's for you, this code is for you, you can do anything with it. But the purpose of this video is to show you first what I've done, and second, to understand the impact of different components of the Gray Wolf equations. So what I've done in this code, as you can see, I've got three sliders. Remember, there are some controlling parameters in the Gray Wolf, one of them is A, so it, it is changed, as I said, you can set it to any value, but I change it, normally it is linearly changed from two all the way to zero, okay? So that's the first thing that I've done here. R1 and R2, what are they? Remember, those are the parameters, the random parameter. Those are the random number between zero and one. You can change them to any value. But there are also two sliders for uppercase A and C, uppercase C. You can't change this, although you can, but it stays stay there because I set the value, I get the values, I set the values based on these three parameters. And that's exactly what happens in the, in the Gray Wolf Optimizer. In the Gray Wolf Optimizer, the values of A and D depend on the values of these, some of these parameters. So that's why I put it outside the box. So don't change this, just play around with these ones. On the right hand side also, I've got a slider to change the position of alpha in T1, which means in the current iteration, let's say I've got two time, T1 and T2. T1 is the current iteration, T2 is the next iteration. That's the next step in the optimization. Let's say you have a collection of solution, or one warfare, let's say, and one prey, and you want to update the position for the next step. Also, I've got another slider that changed the position of the prey. So I've got also put the, the, the image of these ones, so you know which one is the prey, which one is the, uh, the, the wolf. I can't change this, because the next position of the wolf is defined based on the equation which is a function of the current solution, sorry, the current position, the prey position, and all these parameters. So you can get a sense of, at least now you know what these sliders are. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to reset this. All right, so remember I said the controlling parameter A impact uppercase A2. When A is between minus 1 and 1, things go inside. That means the next position of wolf is inside the area between the current solution, the current position, and the prey. So these, the position of these two images change based on these two. So only consider this part for now. So it's one dimension, okay? And what I do now, I change slowly a is equal to two. Look at the value of uppercase a. The value of uppercase a is one. If I drag it to the left slowly, so when A is between zero to one, as you can see, the position of the wolf is somewhere between that area, where the current location is and where the position of the prey is. And that's what we expected. I say, when A is between minus one and one, it's in this space, okay? So, and I can change this. If I change this now, if I change this, as long as it's between one and one, as long as A is between one and minus one and one, it stays in this place. Now, if I move the wolf to the left-hand side and the prey to the right-hand side, okay, as you can see, this time, when A is between minus one, zero to minus one, then, or minus one to zero, I should say, then the location is in that space, okay? But that doesn't mean that we don't, we're gonna, we are bound to that space. If A is greater than minus one, so as you can see, we are now passing the prey and find the location on the right hand side, complete on the right hand side. And based on the random value, you can be in that space, any space. As long as you keep in your mind that when A is between minus and one, you are in that space, in this area, all right? But as soon as, let's go back to where we start, I'm gonna reset this, there we go. See now, if I change this to from, see look at the A, if it's between zero to one, it's in that space but as soon as I increase it to more, when it's between one and two, more than, greater than one, then it's outside that area. So 
It's safe to say that when uppercase A is between minus and one, you are exploiting its edge space because you are focusing in the middle. But more than that, when it's greater than one or less than one, less than minus one, I should say, you're exploring this edge space. And see what happens now when C changes. R2 impacts C, it provides more stochastic behavior, as you can see, you see? Whether I'm outside or inside, whether I'm, I'm, this, I'm on this side of the prey or that side, that's gonna create that sort of stochastic behavior. So, and it doesn't change uh, based on the parameter A, it's not linear, it's completely random. And to show you that, I've got a piece of code here. Remember, R1 and R2 are random, okay? Those are the random parameters, which means they are generated randomly. The only thing that we can change, the only parameter that we can change is A, okay? And see what happens when I, I'm just gonna reset this quickly to have, to have the initial, see if when A is equal to two, the movements are very random. It's one dimension, you go back and forth, back and forth. But as I, you know, slowly drag it to the left, the set is around the same area, towards or, or outward the prey, doesn't matter, but it's, it's, it's the impact of the randomness are decreased significantly. And if I get it off the background and show you everything, and I mean, think about a search, one, that slider, let's say the optimal value is somewhere around here. With enough number of iteration that you go back and forth, you're gonna find it. You're gonna find a very close a solution that is very close to that, and that's what happens here. So I remove the background, so you can now see the number, the different position that we search, and if I reduce it at some point, there we go, you can, it's hard to see now there anymore because there's a lot of them, right? But you get the idea behind this, um, and that's exactly what happened. Even the changes in A is more significant when A is uppercase is two, whereas to zero. So that's the idea behind, you know, these equation and the impact of these equation. Let me just remove the, uh, bring back the background so we can play around with it a bit more. So that's one dimension. Now think about it, if you add more dimension, you're gonna get different behaviors. And that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna show you a different file here that I have for two dimensional. This time, I've got a gray wolf in 2D, 2D space, right? See, I've got, think about it, the vector of A has multiple dimension, all vectors has, have multiple dimension. That's why I have this time AX, AY. So that means if I drag this, I'm now changing the position, impacting the position across the x-axis. If I'm changing the second one, then it's, it goes up and down. Same for R1, R2, uppercase A, uppercase C, I have now a pair of slider for each, because simply because I'm working with the dimension. It was hard to create a vector here in the code, I can, but it was hard to visualize it and play around with it with these sliders, so that's why I say I've written AX, AY, R1X, R1Y, and so on. Even the position of the gray wolf, you can move it left and right, and this time, because it's 2D, you can move up and down, same for the prey as well. So think about it, when, remember I said when A is between zero and one, you are searching this space, inside this rectangular space that you can create from this circle, the current position of the gray wolf, and the position of the prey. So let's see what happens. Um, if I move this, as long as it's between zero to one, as you can see, it stays in that area. And I can amplify it with changing these R1 and R2. See so if I say between zero to one in that space. Again, it's in that space. Now think about it. If I move this up and down and at the same time, this up and down, I cover the entire space between the current position of the wolf and the position of the prey. Maybe I can show you with the background. Let's see what, how it looks like. So with the background, if I remove the background and we can see the position of, oh, not, not in the setup, in the draw. Again, don't worry about the code, you're gonna have the code. I didn't want to really waste your time to write this code because the main purpose of this video is to understand these equations, not necessarily how I've written the code. So let's move this up. It's gonna be a look a bit messy, but that's fine. See now, if I drag it to the right, um, if I drag it to the left, my bad gonna be supposed to be one, and this one dragged down. Let's reset it. I don't wanna touch these two. So if I go left or right, 
The reason why we go outside that space because I change R1 X and R1 Y, but I want to do that now. So if I go up, left, right, that's this space. Down, left, up. So what I'm showing is that this is where we get all these values inside that area, which is important in terms of exploitation. But how about exploration? Well, exploration is done by changing these parameters when A and uh, AX and AY are more than two or more than one or less than minus one, and also this parameter, the random parameter. So to have to play, have some fun, remember R1 and R2 are random, so I've already written this code but commented out. So if I get rid of these comments, you can kind of see what happens to the outcome. There we go. So as you can see, if I remove, if I decrease it over time, you focus more and more around the current position. And if it's more than that, then it's chaotic. You go everywhere because you are exploding this edge space, right? And as it goes down, the search, the magnitude of search changes and gets smaller and smaller. And you're focusing more on exploitation rather than exploration. And well, of course, you keep updating the position of the wolf also. Imagine if I update the position of the wolf, then the whole search is also changed. Even the position of the prey, if I move it down here, as you can see, I can pull the neck. You kind of see that the wolf's, the, the, current, the neck position of wolf tends toward the position of the, the prey. So that is the idea, guys. See, nothing changed. I'm not using a different equation. It's the same equation, but in two dimensions. How do we add another dimension? Easy, just add one more value. It's hard here because then I have to write a z, t1 z, r2 z, whatever z. But in, in the algorithm itself, it's just a vector. There is one parameter called the number of dimension. Once you set it up, then every vector gets decreased. Or, I mean, the size of every vector gets increased to accommodate the number of parameters required. And uh, I think that's pretty much everything. Let's quickly comment also this to show you how this is going to search the search space randomly, abruptly, or gradually. And if I change the position of the wolf and maybe also the prey, you kind of see that. See, we've never searched that area of the screen, but if I move the prey to the left, we are going to bring the wolves to that area too. There we go. See, now they're searching that area too. And think about it. If I was looking for, you know, an optimal solution in this space, now it's covering everything. It's just the magnitude of the changes, which should be decreased over time. It looks messy now, but you get the idea um, how it works. So to wrap these things up, I've got one more sim simulation to show you, because so far we had one gray wolf and one prey. But you remember I said the position of the prey is indicated by the best three wolves. How does that work? There we go. So if we're just going to open that, compile it. Now this time, there is no prey anymore because it is estimated by the best three wolves. I've got this wolf here. I've got second wolves. That's alpha, that is beta, and that is delta. And that one is omega. That's the next position of the omega. As you can see, if I move this in close to one area, it gravitates everything because it is assumed that the position of the, the, the prey is somewhere around here. Just like the, the, uh, uh, the last video that I show you where the position of each alpha and beta and delta is and how they update it, same story here. And of course, by changing these parameters, you're going to get different outcome in the output too because this is the up position updating, right? So what happens when you're optimizing uh, a function using this technique or using the gray wolf. Remember R1 and R2 are random, so let's make them random quickly. There we go, just like that, okay? And remember, we keep updating alpha, beta, and delta while also decreasing this from two to zero. Let's make it a little bit close to zero, so I don't want abrupt movement. Just get an idea, so if I move this up here, Let's say I update the position of the three gray wolves, and they are now over here. So that's why the search is now focused towards that area, not this area because we are focusing on that. But of course, at the beginning of the iterations, the optimization, these are high. The value of lowercase a is high, that's why we go that way also. You see, we cover pretty much everything. 
But as I move on, maybe I'll remove the background and we're gonna do some experiment, interesting experiment again. So if I remove the background again, so that we can see all the things that we draw, uh, it's gonna be very messy, my bad. I can't even move it, but you get the point, right? <laughs> you, you get the point that when I, well, what I was saying that if all the wolves are one side, then it doesn't bother searching the other side, unless the A, the parameter A is too high. But if it's too low, then it's always in the area inside them. And uh, if I, just interestingly, if I connect these wolves, which means alpha, beta, and delta are the same now, uh, see, it, 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 it comes to you, completely comes to you, because the three best solutions are in the same location. That's an indication of a very, very good point in the search space. So that's why it's worth to search around it. And it becomes one dimension. If I move it in one dimension, see, it goes just left and right, a bit up and down, perhaps, because y is a y is 0, 2. But if I make it 0, then it's almost uh, one dimensional. So in terms of the code, guys, as I said, you can download all the packages, the problem before you already downloaded, but three more zip files underneath this video. Make sure to download them. And uh, in the package, there is a file, which is basically a zip file extracted. Sketch.javascript is the code that you can find and play around with it. But if you want to just do some experiment, double click on the HTML file in that folder, and you will see the output on the right-hand side. But what I've done here, as you can see, I've got alpha wolf, beta wolf, delta wolf, uh, and a bunch of sliders, but I'm gonna show you the actual equations just quickly. See, I calculate the distance for alpha wolf, d a or d alpha, d beta, and d delta. Then I calculated x1, x2, x3, or y1, y2, y3. The reason why I didn't have y in the other equation because x is a vector, it's a position vector can be multi-dimensional, here in two-dimensional. And anyway, and I, opposition, I updated the position of omega or any other wolf in the pack based on that. So the next position is equal to x alpha plus x beta plus delta divided by three. So that's the average of uh, all of them. And uh, that wraps it up, guys, for this video. And you know, I spent a few days, maybe one or two weeks, I think, to write this code. Like that one is 200 lines, 205 lines of code. Um, just for the sake of um, teaching and learning, because to me, you cannot master an algorithm if you don't understand its component. Now you know why I have the parameter lowercase a, because it allows me to switch from exploration to exploitation, right? If I drag it from two to zero, it changes the impact. Now you know why I have alpha, beta, and delta. Um, and how the, the estimated position of a prey is calculated. You know why you can't change this slider at all. You know why the only parameter that can be tuned is A, and why is it a linear space decreased from two to zero. So now you have this understanding, and that helps you a lot when you're solving a problem, because a lot of people just randomly change these parameters, but not really. They are not random, there are some thoughts behind it, and now you know why I had those equations. And hopefully it was enjoying and engaging too. So again, before we finish, make sure to download those files and play around with them. And I'm sure that you will have so much fun, as much as I um, did when I was writing uh, these codes. Thanks for watching.